Rick Santorum is quoting a blog post that misrepresents a survey that um, I published with, with uh, Bart Verhegan and a number of other scientists. In our study, we found that um, amongst 1,800 scientists, when you look at the people with the most expertise in climate change, we found an overwhelming consensus, over 90% consensus. And that results entirely consistent with a number of other studies that find overwhelming consensus. Now, Santorum is quoting from a blog post which misrepresents our results. And it misrepresents it by using two techniques, uh, uses fake experts and impossible expectations to basically make the consensus disappear. Uh, it's, it's just a misleading technique uh, used to cast doubt on the scientific consensus. What, what is the value of a presidential candidate quoting from a blog post? I, for democracy to work, um, society needs to be relying on reliable information, reliable evidence-based science. And the most reliable source of information is peer-reviewed scientific papers uh, published by scientific experts. Now, when people who purport to be the leader of, leader of the United States are quoting from blogs, blogs that are distorting peer-reviewed papers, that's a big problem because if the public are being misinformed about something as important as the scientific consensus on climate change, then society can go in dangerous directions. And, and that is what's been happening for the last few decades, unfortunately. And uh, one last thing, Santorum claims to quote the chairman of the IPCC. Um, Santorum claims to be uh, quoting from the head of the IPCC. He's actually quoting just from one lead author amongst many lead authors of many chapters of the IPCC reports. So again, that's, that's a misrepresentation and it's also talking up um, or exaggerating the credentials of this one person that he's quoting. Uh, two of the ways that, that climate deniers can cast doubt on the consensus is the technique of fake experts and the technique of impossible expectations. Uh, now, the technique of fake experts is the use of spokespeople or just uh, using people who are portrayed as if they're climate scientists, but they don't actually have expertise in climate science or they haven't actually published peer-reviewed climate papers. So that's the technique of fake experts. The other technique, impossible expectations, is demanding a level of proof uh, ever higher and higher uh, and that's impossible to meet. And the tobacco industry did this in the 70s with great effect, demanding higher and higher levels of proof that smoking causes cancer as a way of delaying regulation of the tobacco industry. Now, um, what uh, Rick Santorum is doing uh, when he uh, claims that the consensus on climate change is only 57%, he's actually quoting a blog post so it's good to see that presidential candidates are relying on blogs for their scientific information rather than peer-reviewed climate papers. And this blog is basically misrepresenting the results of a paper that Bart Verhegan um, published that I, I was one of the co-authors of this paper. What we did in this study was we surveyed over 1,800 um, mostly scientists, people who had made statements about climate change or published peer-reviewed um, papers about climate change. And we found that amongst that full group of 1,800 scientists, there was a, there was a fairly, um, fairly high level of consensus, but this wasn't all publishing climate scientists. Uh, there was a lot of them hadn't published any climate papers at all. So what we did then was we looked at just the scientists who had published uh, at least 10 peer-reviewed climate papers and then, uh, amongst that group, we found at least a 90% consensus. So our study found an overwhelming scientific agreement that humans are causing most of global warming. This is the study that Rick Santorum is using to claim that there's no consensus. The blog post that he's citing uh, by Fabius Maximus, 
Firstly, it uses fake experts because he uses all 1,800 scientists. A, a lot of those scientists hadn't published any papers about climate change. And yet, um, and a lot of them weren't climate scientists at all. But Rick Santorum quotes it as if there are 1,800 climate scientists. The other thing he does is he only includes scientists who were at least 95% confident that humans are causing most of global warming. So he was raising the standard of proof to an impossible level. It meant that if a scientist was 90% confident that humans are causing global warming, that wasn't good enough for Fabius Maximus and he didn't include them in the consensus. So by raising that level, he was able to make the consensus disappear. Richard Toll is a professor at the University of Sussex and uh, he was uh, actually flown by the Republican Party to Capitol Hill to give testimony against uh, our paper, our peer-reviewed paper that had found 97% consensus. And in his testimony, he, um, he claimed that our, our result was uh, conjured out of thin air. And that was the quote that Rick Santorum uh, used in his uh, interview on the Bill Maher show. And basically, um, the way Richard Tull uh, had, had constructed his criticism, uh, it was a paper that he'd written that he submitted to Environmental Research Letters, the same journal that we published in. Uh, the journal had their expert reviewers review Richard Tull's uh, criticisms, and they listed 24 errors in his paper and rejected it. They, they said it was too flawed to be published. And rather than fix the flaws in his paper, um, Toll just went on to resubmit that same paper without fixing it to journal after journal until it got published. And we then published a response to it. And there were so many errors in Toll's criticism that we couldn't fit it in a single paper. We had to publish a, a separate booklet listing all the errors in Toll's paper. Okay, now this is the gentleman that Santorum refers to as the, the head of the, IP, the UNIPC, according to him. He says IPC instead of IPCC. So Rick Santorum refers to Richard Toll as the head of the UNIPCC. Uh, he's not obviously the head of the UNIPCC. He's, he's the lead author of one of the chapters there are many chapters, there are many lead authors. Richard Toll is one amongst many. Um, and, and yeah, so uh, again, it's another, it's, I, I guess it's almost a form of fake expert trying to um, burnish Toll's credentials to make him out that he's greater than he actually is. Um, did, didn't Toll come up with a, wasn't his argument something like it wasn't 97%, it was only 91% or 93% or something like that? Was that part of the conversation? What Richard Toll did was he, he took our data and did his own analysis of it. And he basically conjured numbers out of thin air on his own. He basically um, worked out that... that there must have been 300 rejection papers in our sample of, of 12,000 papers without actually um, identifying any of them. It was out of thin air. But, but from that, he calculated a, a new consensus, which was 91%. Um, I mean, I mean it's, it's a wrong number. The, there are 300 rejection papers. But even then, 91%, it's still an overwhelming consensus. Um, even if it was true. 